Hi everyone, Stepan here. In today's video, I'm going to go over the Ragozin defense uh, as an opening very similar to the Nimtsu Indian defense in a sense that they have the same plans, they have the same ideas, and most often players who play the Nimtsu Indian defense are going to combine the Ragozin in the repertoire. I'm going to explain why. Before I start, I'd just like to say that my new microphone just arrived half an hour ago. So this is the first video I'm recording with the new microphone. So finally, I don't have to use uh, the equalizers and gain increasing software and all of that stuff. And my old, where is my old microphone? Wait. So my new, uh, my new microphone is the Blue Yeti Pro, which I'm already very happy with. My old microphone has served for almost two years and now I'm happy that I finally have, I hope, normal sound. Uh, let me know if the sound is okay, by the way. Uh, this is the first test. Okay, so let's get into the Ragozin. Uh, this is the starting position of the Ragozin defense, which can be, be reached via several different move orders. I'm going to show you two main move orders. So white plays d4. Uh, that's, of course, the way to enter the Ragozin. We have d5 as the first option. And now c4, e6, the normal queen's gambit declined position. And if white goes for knight c3, we have knight f6 by black. White in these lines uh, doesn't play bishop g5. If white plays the move knight to f3, which is a very popular move, uh, it's in fact the third most common move after knight to f6. Uh, cd5, bishop g5 are the two more common ones. But if he plays knight to f3, then the move bishop to b4 is the Ragozin defense. Now, the other move order, which is more common, is d4, knight f6. So not going into the queen's gambit declined, but after c4, e6, black is trying to go into the Nimtso Indian defense. Uh, you can find the Nimtso Indian defense playlist on the channel. So if you need more info on the Nimtso, uh, look at the playlist. Uh, perhaps look at the intro video first, uh, because the Ragozin is going to have very similar plans and some lines are even going to transpose. So in this case, if white obliges and plays the move knight to c3, then of course black plays bishop b4, we have the normal Nimtsu Indian defense. But uh, today, uh, way more popular is to try and avoid the Nimtsu with the move knight to f3. Uh, now the move knight to f3 tries to play against black's main opening because the Nimtsu is very solid, uh, very good for black. Black has a lead in development and a lot of activity, especially because of the pressure we show you this position, which would be b4, on the light squares and on the e4 square, making e4 very hard to play and also threatening stuff like knight e4, c5, queen a5, and putting triple pressure on this point. Okay, so white plays knight to f3, and black now has several options. He can go for the bogo Indian, which I'm yet to cover on the channel with bishop b4 check. He can go for the queen's Indian, which is coming soon. Uh, or he can go for the Queen's Gambit declined uh, with d5, Queen's Gambit declined setup, this pawn formation. And now white has two options, well, two good options. The best one is to play knight to c3, and after he plays knight to c3, bishop to b4 is the Ragozin again. This is the same position we've had after the normal Queen's Gambit declined. So black has, in a sense, achieved something. He has a Nimtso Indian type position. Uh, with a different move order, with the white knight on f3 already. So in the normal Nimtso Indians, knight c3, bishop to b4, you can see that white hasn't committed his knight to, to f3 yet, therefore he has several options. He can go queen c2, e3, f3, you can, you can see the playlist. After the Ragozin uh, uh, move order, he has already committed the knight to f3, so his options are somewhat restricted. So what can he do? After d5, if white desperately wants to avoid Nimtso Indian Ragozin type setups, he can go for g3, transposing into the Catalan. And now after d takes c4, uh, bishop g2, a6 castles, we now have an open Catalan and another very theoretical position, which is coming up on the channel. So let's stick, let's stick to the Ragozin. These are the intricacies of the position. Therefore, it makes sense in your repertoire for black to combine the Ragozin with the, with the Nimtso Indian defense, you will then be able to, after this position, after e6, to have an answer to both knight f3 and knight to c3. Against knight c3 you play the Nimtso, against knight c3 you play the Ragozin. If they go for the Catalan, well, be prepared for the Catalan as well. But this restricts your opponent's options. So what is the Ragozin about? 
the Rogozin de defense, same as the Nimtsu Indian, uh, is about quick development, putting pressure on white's position and making it hard for white to consolidate uh, and develop quickly. Firstly, that's because of the pressure on c3. So in some positions, black could be threatening to double the pawns. In some other positions, as I said, the move c5 and queen to a5 and knight to e4 could be a lot of trouble. Basically, what black is trying to do, he's trying to restrict e4, therefore trying to force white into a concession with e3, uh, which, if played before the bishop is developed, is a concession, and makes white's position slightly less active, white has slightly less space, slightly uh, worse piece activity. Okay, we're going to look at several moves for white. Uh, the two main moves are bishop g5 and c takes d5. Two very interesting options are queen a4 and queen b3, and e3 transposes into the Nimtso Indian defense, into the Gligoric system, so let's look at that first. So in this position, if e3 is played, uh, black simply castles. This is the least active move, of course, hemming in the bishop uh, on c1, bishop to d3, and now after c5, we have the Gligoric system of the Nimtso Indian. Uh, you can, you can uh, see the system covered in the Nimtso Indian playlist. Queen b3 is a sideline which I have to mention because it makes a lot of sense. Uh, queen b3 is a move that stops uh, knight e4 ideas indirectly, also defends uh, the, the c4 pawn. Of course, if, if, if white does nothing, let's say white plays a stupid move, then knight to e4 is very annoying. Uh, you would have to do something about this, either ruin your pawn structure or, well, in this case, let's see what the best move is, queen to c2 would at least allow uh, an active position with c5 and c takes d4 would have to be played uh, afterwards and black would have a strong center. So white in a sense has to do something to battle this idea. Therefore the options uh, he has, bishop g5, make sense because it indirectly defends e4. Uh, queen a4 makes sense because it's a tempo move indirectly again defending e4 by attacking the bishop. Uh, queen b3 does the same thing. e3 does the same thing because it reinforces the weak, uh, the weak point in the position and accepts double pawns if black should uh, wish to do that. But queen b3. Queen b3 is a sideline for a reason. It's, uh, it's a worse move than bishop g5, cd, or queen a4 uh, because it gets the queen to an awkward square, attacks the bishop, and... It's not as active as queen a4, but it has its upside, upsides as well. If we compare queen b3 to queen a4, bishop to d7 is not such an active move for black when the queen is on b3. Okay, uh, <clears throat> in this position, I'm just going to mention the main problem black has. Uh, same as in every other queen's game with declined pawn structure, where all of black's pawns in the center are white squares, this is a problem piece. Therefore, in Dragozin, uh, black is going to have to do something about that bishop, and that's most often achieved by playing c5, or in some cases, we are going to see by playing e5. If you don't play one of these two moves, then, well, your bishop is a dead piece. So the best way to use queen b3 as a liability is to go c5 immediately. Now, white doesn't have any other options but to take d takes c5 and now knight to c6, defends the bishop again, you don't need to recapture immediately. Uh, bishop to g5, putting pressure on the knight, stopping knight e4, and now queen to a5. And in this position, if you, if you do nothing, there's a very strong threat. Let's say, again, uh, a very bad move, e3. Knight to e4, and now you are losing an exchange, or a pawn, or both. So what do you do here? If, if rook to c1, knight takes, uh, or yeah, pawn takes. And this pawn structure is now just horrible. This is now, look at this. This is, this is absolutely dreadful. So in the position after queen a5, bishop takes f6, giving up the bishop pair to uh, reduce the pressure on c3. Uh, d takes c4 can be interposed, that's the best move, because if you take the bishop immediately, uh, a white, can, uh, white can take here, and that should be slightly better. So you interpose d takes c4, and after queen takes c4, g takes f6, rook to c1. The position is considered to be slightly better for white, and obviously it is slightly better for white. Uh, he still has seven pawns, white, uh, black has six, so black is yet to recapture the c5 pawn. Uh, white has a better pawn structure, and the only thing he lacks is development and peace activity, but after e3, bishop to d3, castles, he's going to be perfectly fine. So queen to b3 is a move which 
I don't really like and I think there are better moves. So let's look at what white can do. Okay, now we are moving on to the main moves, bishop g5 and c takes d5, and I'm going to explain the ideas behind them. The move bishop g5 is a very simple move, uh, and it serves two purposes. Firstly, it stops knight e4, which is very important. Secondly, it prepares development. White simply wants to play e3, develop his bishop and castle. If white plays the move e3, as we saw in the previous position with uh, e3 on move 5, before the bishop is developed, then the c1 bishop is a problem piece. So in this case, after bishop to g5, black has a very interesting option, and the main move is h6. h6 forces an exchange on f6, and black basically wins the bishop pair. This is something different to the Nimzo Indian, where black is usually the one who gives up the dark squared bishop on c3. In this position, let me just show you why bishop h4 doesn't work, trying to keep the pin. Not because of g5, because g5 bishop g3 is fine, black has weakened his pawn structure, but because of d takes c4. And there is no way for white to regain the pawn. If he tries the move e3, then b5 is very similar to uh, some semislav, uh, to some semislav structures. In fact, I'm going to show you one. I'm going to show you a game I played against uh, Grandmaster B Misho Cebalo, in which he played an unsound pawn sacrifice, and I got a better position. So we are talking about the anti-Moscow position. You can find it on the channel. Uh, in this position, uh, bishop to h4 is played. And now after d takes c, the main move is e4. And e4 still keeps the pawn for black, but it's easier for white to fight and he has great compensation. After a4, which Mr. Cebala played, bishop to b4 and next move b5 is going to be played. You can see that this position is very, very similar. Uh, of course, a4 hasn't been played, but it's it's basically a very similar position. So. In this case, bishop h4 is a mistake, same as in that variation I, I had played, because after a4, you go c6, bishop to e2, bishop b7, castles, a6, and black is simply a pawn up. Therefore, after h6, uh, white has to take. Queen t uh, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, and now e3 finally. And this is an improvement to the old main line of the Ragozin for white, where where white has done all of this uh, with with his bishop on c1, and this is just better. You have now played e3 after you have gotten rid of your bishop. So in this position, black castles, uh, rook to c1, d takes c4 is the best move. Uh, you want to make some room for your bishop somehow. Uh, bishop takes c4, and now c5. You are playing c5 in order to play this. You want your bishop on a very active diagonal. If this bishop is stuck on c8, then black is, of course, worse. White castles, c takes d4, knight takes d4, bishop to d7, queen to b3 attacking the bishop, you know, knight to c6. After, this is not blundering a piece, because after knight takes c6 by white, you can take on c3. Rook takes c3 and bishop c6. And unfortunately for both sides, this position couldn't be any more equal. Uh, equal material, light squared bishops, two rooks and the queen, completely symmetrical pawn structure. The only difference is that black has Luft and white doesn't, so... If anybody is better, theoretically, it should be black, um, but it's it's nothing. The position is equal. So the main line of the Ragozin with bishop to, to g5 with best play leads to that. What you have to remember is this idea with h6, which forces bishop takes f6, and you are going to give up your dark squared bishop later on on c3 in order to develop your bishop to c6, but you get equality with black. Now let's look at the alternative. Uh, there is one more thing uh, with with the Ragozin, and that's that people have tried uh, to make Black's life harder with the move uh, c takes d5, and we are going to see why. Before I do that, I'm going to show you uh, I'm going to show you the other variation with queen a4 because I think that will make more sense. Uh, queen a4 is a very logical move. Now, in queen's pawn openings, uh, c4 for white attacking black center and c5 for black attacking white center are very sensible pawn breaks which are played in a ton of openings. Nimzo Indian, Tarash, uh, Semislav, a ton of different queens can be declined. Uh, and 
By playing the move queen a4, this is now a double attack on the bishop and on the king. There is only one defense. You have to play knight c6. Now, if you had to uh, find one downside to the move knight c6 for black, what would that be? The obvious answer is you are not moving your c-pawn anytime soon. Therefore, by playing queen a4, uh, white has eliminated black's option of playing c5 very early on. So in this position, uh, we can either, as white, continue with e3 or bishop g5. e3 is the main move, but it has a downside of keeping this bishop hemmed in. So after e3 castles, uh, bishop to d2, a passive position of the bishop, d takes c4, bishop takes c4, bishop to d6. Uh, this position is almost equal. Black has one problem, the c8 bishop. Developing it to b7 is impossible because you would lose your knight. Therefore, in this position, the bishop has returned to d6. Firstly, there is no point pinning the knight when the bishop is on d2. But more importantly, it's reinforcing an important pawn break, a liberating pawn break, e5. So after the move queen c2 by white, black plays e5. As I said, black needs to play either c5 or e5 to activate his c8 bishop. And this has finally opened up the diagonal. So d takes e5, knight takes e5, knight e5, bishop e5, f4 is the main move. Bishop c3, bishop c3, knight to g4. And this position has been reached 20 or so times. And Magnus Carlsen, I think, played it. Uh, yeah, Magnus Carlsen played this with black. Uh, he lost the game against Dimitri Andrejkin in 2019. Most of the games are draws. Uh, to be honest. So in this position, bishop to d4 should be played. And here, uh, there's a tricky move by black. He plays c5 to stop queenside castling. After c5, the idea is bishop takes c5, rook to e8 to put double pressure here and stopping queenside castling. If you go after bishop d5, rook e8 immediately, then queenside castling is, is fine because once the bishop captures here, the queen is attacked. So this is queen a4. The idea, as I said, is very straightforward. Uh, an improvement for white uh, after knight to c6 is not to play e3 immediately, but to play the move bishop to g5. I mean, why not? Uh, in this position, after h6, you again cannot play bishop h4. Let me show you why. After bishop to h4, d takes c4, e3, bishop to d7. You don't have time to take on c4 because there are some nasty discoveries on the queen. Uh, and you would be in trouble after bishop takes c3, b takes c3, knight takes d4, for example, your queen is attacked. So queen to c2, and now b5 again, black has managed to keep his extra pawn. So after h6, bishop takes f6, queen takes f6, e3, we now have an improved position for white. Why is it improved? Well, firstly, you got rid of your bad bishop on c1. You managed to play e3, you're about to develop your light squared bishop. And importantly, black doesn't have the time to play c5. Now, how do you develop your light squared bishop? It's really tough. After castles, bishop to e2, black now has to think of ways to develop his, uh, his pieces. Bishop d7, queen d3, dc4, queen c4, and now queen to g6. Castles going for going for activity, but still needing to sort out his bishop. Again, the plan is going to be the same. Black has to play the move e5 in order to activate his bishop. So this, I feel, is the most active way for white to play. This idea with queen a4, stopping c5, then exchanging your uh, c1 bishop on f6 first, only then playing e3. And in this position, it should be equal again. Black has the bishop pair, but once the position opens up, uh, white should hold a slight edge. Now, uh, let's look at c takes d5. Uh, so c takes d5. And e takes d5, while opening up the bishop uh, for, for black, and black will not have to prepare the move e5 or anything like that, uh, serves a very important pur purpose. As we saw in most lines with bishop to g5, h6, black was unable to play bishop h4. White, I'm sorry, was unable to play bishop h4. Why? Because he would lose his c4 pawn. By playing c takes d5, uh, and e takes d5, he did open up the bishop, but he got rid of his weakness. So in this position after h6, you can play bishop h4 because there is no pawn on, on c4. So here, again, uh, white has managed to improve on his play. He has uh, made a strategic concession by improving one of the black pieces, but he doesn't have a weakness on c4 and he's not losing a pawn. c5, uh, a very active move by uh, by 
by black. In this position, if the pawn is taken, you of course have an isolated queen's pawn position, but that's fine, you can continue with queen a5. Uh, e3, I'm sorry, e3, and now c4. And this is the downside. Uh, the downside of playing this for, for white is that black manages to get his pawn majority rolling after c4. You can see that uh, he has a, I'm sorry, 3 to 2 pawn majority on the queen side, which means that if some of the pieces are exchanged, he will have the ability to create a passed pawn, whereas it's going to be much harder to do that for white with his 5 to 4 on the king side. Okay, so what can what can he do about that? Queen uh, bishop to h4, c5. Uh, taking, as I said, it has been played, d takes c, but either knight b to d7, knight to c6, uh, even g5 is possible, castles, castles is possible, bishop takes c3 is possible. The best move is objectively knight b to d7, preparing to recapture the pawn later on, e3, and now queen a5, putting extra pressure on the knight. Knight to d2. Now you can simply go bishop c3, bc3, and queen takes c5. And in this position, absolutely no problems for black with his isolated queen's pawn. White, of course, is going to be blockading the pawn, but white also has weaknesses. And it's not good to take after c5. Other options like rook c1 or a3 or bishop takes f6 can be played, but they don't really solve the issue. So e3 is something you basically have to do. And after c4, well, black now has something to play, play for. Knight to d2, g5 chasing the bishop away, bishop to g3. And now bishop to f5, the most active square, h4 and rook to g8. And in this position, black is going all in basically. Black is attacking, uh, black is putting pressure on the king side, uh, black has a very active f5 bishop, uh, black could exchange on c3 if he wishes to do that and follow it up with b5, a5, b4, trying to create a passed pawn. And I mean, from a classical perspective, white should be slightly better after castles, but it's very dangerous. In this position, uh, most games send in a draw uh, with h takes g5, and h takes g5 and bishop to e5 but it's not that easy to play this position for white i would rather be black so i think that if you choose to after dragozin to play c takes d5 if you find yourself playing against an experienced dragozin player you could be facing a very dangerous attack so okay uh, to conclude dragozin is is an opening very similar to the nimzo very interesting gives black uh, very good play. It's more active than normal Queen's Gambit declined lines, which is why I like it. It's also more active than most semi-Slav and Slav lines, uh, meaning that black is the one choosing to go for the activity. When you play the semi-Slav, for example, you have to wait for white to do something crazy, or start with bishop g5 or something. So the Ragozin is a very fighting opening, and as I said, combining it with the Nimzo will give you a very good repertoire against d4 with black. The only opening you have to cover in detail then would be the Catalan, and only some lines of the Catalan, but that's not that hard. So studying the Nimzo, the Ragozin, and the Catalan is a complete uh, repertoire against d4. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, I would like to remind you that tomorrow at 3 p.m. Croatian, I'm going to be streaming. We are going to have an interactive training session. Um, I'm going to cover a very interesting game and you guys can join me for analysis. I hope that the training sessions on Twitch are going to be useful and that they are going to be a good training method for all of us. So join me tomorrow on Twitch. There's a link in the description below. Uh, thank you for watching and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.